This is my 1997 Chevrolet Camaro RS. It's got a 3.8 liter V6 motor and I'm still having some trouble with a uh, hard start. It just wants to crank and crank. Uh, in a previous video I replaced the fuel pressure regulator and uh, I'm still ha experiencing some problems. So I'm going to put a fuel pressure tester on this thing and uh, see what my fuel pressure is. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is take the fuse out for the fuel pump. I know it's this one. I looked it up in the, the uh, owner's manual. So I'm going to pull that out, crank the engine, and let it uh, get rid of all that fuel pressure. Here's a fuel pressure test kit that I'm going to be using. I've, I'm renting this from a local uh, auto parts store. General Motors has a Schrader valve on the fuel line, the fuel rail. This will hook right into it. I don't have to use any of these other fittings. Um, depending on your vehicle, you might have to use one of those other fittings. You might have to take a fuel line off or something. But All right, you can see the Schrader valve right here on the fuel rail. I'll take the cap off and uh, connect my fuel pressure tester on it. There shouldn't be any gas come out of here under pressure, uh, but I'm going to put a rag down anyway just to catch anything that might come out. All right, what we're going to do now is turn the key, let the fuel pump kick on, pressurize the system. That needle should should land somewhere between 48 and 55 pounds. I think that's what the spec is on this. Whoa. So we go to 10 pounds of pressure, and then we drop to zero in about two seconds. No wonder why this thing doesn't want to start. Let's see if I can crank it. Wow, it started at 10 pounds of pressure and it's going up to 18. This car's running on 18 pounds of pressure. Let's see what happens when I rev it. It just wiggles a little bit. <clears throat> There's no hesitation. Revved it up to 3,000 and it didn't even miss. Let's turn the key off. That's no good. So it goes to zero in about three and a half seconds. So let's look into this a little bit more and see what in the world's going on. Okay, so what in the world's causing this quick drop off in fuel pressure? And why is my fuel pressure so low? Could be the check valve in the pump and I could have a hole in one of the lines in the tank. Uh, it's kind of like drinking a, a drink with a straw that has a hole in it. You just, you know, it just doesn't work too well. It's possibly that or uh, maybe have a leaky injector uh, with the bleeding off as fast as it does. I'm not so sure that's that, but, but then again it could be the regulator um, and I just replaced that. Uh, so maybe the regulator's faulty. I'm going to check something with this car. I'm going to turn the car on, I'm going to let it idle, I'm going to check the pressure. If I take the fuel or the uh, vacuum line off of the regulator, pressure should raise because vacuum is, is actually pulling the spring that's inside of it away from up, you know, up and away from the diaphragm and it's kind of opening up the line. If I take the vacuum away, the spring should expand, therefore pushing the diaphragm into the fuel regulator and, and basically kind of closing off the fuel allowing fuel pressure to raise. Uh, vacuum is at its greatest when the car is at idle so uh, while this car is idling if I pull the vacuum line off the regulator then the pressure should raise. So let's see what happens. Okay, I've got the vacuum line off and there's no change in the pressure. So I think my regulator's bad. We've got one more trick up my sleeve to see if this regulator really is bad. All right, here are my fuel lines. I've got my supply line to the injectors. And then this line right here com that's coming off the regulator is the return line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this re return line off. And uh, I'm going to put a rubber hose on the end of this fitting here and I'm going to pinch it completely off and see what happens with pressure. I should get pressure build up and I should have pressure maintain 
and not drop to zero. If that happens, then I know my, my regulator is bad because the spring in the inside is not functioning properly and it's allowing the gas to just return to the tank and completely bleed off to zero. You got to be extremely careful around the gas. You don't want to get yourself tore up from the floor up if you catch my drift. I'm get that out of the way. Now I've got this rubber hose that I found in my garage. I'm going to put this over the fitting. Then I've got a clamp. All right, before I get started, just a word of disclaimer again. Use extreme caution when dealing with your fuel lines. You're really kind of doing this at your own risk. I don't have the expensive tools to be able to to be able to hook this in properly and pinch this off. The fittings didn't fit from my uh, fuel pressure tester kit into these lines to be able to put something in between them. So I had just had the idea that I was going to take this tube here and just pinch it off completely and. Uh, I would recommend if before you do anything like this, you get a fuel pressure tester that has the release valve. So when you push this button, the pressure will release and discard out of the out of the system. So I would not recommend doing this without one of those release valves. All right, here goes nothing. A pair of pliers. You'll see that I'll I'll pinch this completely flat. Okay, bud. Okay, let's check our pressure. It's on. Okay, pressure is rising. Okay, good. Okay, turn turn off. All right, so it went way over to 70, and pressure is holding. I'm able to maintain pressure having pinched off the return line. So, okay, I think I just verified that the fuel pressure regulator is indeed bad. All right, I'm going to release the pressure. Okay. Let that all drain out. And then I should be able to let... Whoa! Still under pressure. How's that? Oh, I still got pressure. Here we go. All right, now it's down to zero. Boy, that squirted out real quick. Okay, pressure is released. Alright, try not to squirt myself in the eye. <laughs> okay, here we are. Okay, I'm going to put this fuel line back together and then replace the fuel pressure regulator. And then unsnap that quick retainer. If you watched my previous video, you see how much I hate the snap rings job's a whole lot easier. Don't have to remove anything off the spark plug wires or anything like I did in the previous because I had to get a tool to get the snap ring out and I didn't have any room. Some bugger's hard to get out. Got my new fuel pressure regulator. Part number uh, 23045P. So let's see if this one does the trick. Gas kept coming out from around the regulator, so I used the snap, the uh, snap ring that I hated so much in the previous video uh, because I think that's going to help it seat better than this thing. So, All right, here goes nothing. Okay, bud. Okay, I'm getting pressure. Good, it's rising and it's holding. Okay, now I'm up to 22, 40, okay, one more time, okay, 40, went up to 40, 48, 
and it's settled on 44. So this whole time, low pressure and quick bleed off was due to a bad regulator. So I'm glad I found this out. Uh, it's definitely not the check valve. It's definitely not the pump. It was the regulator the whole time. All right, so about 20 minutes later, 15, 20 minutes later, it's still holding some good pressure. Well, I certainly didn't think I'd be doing two videos on a fuel pressure regulator, but that's really kind of what ended up happening. I found uh, low pressure and quick bleed off, and my initial thought was fuel pump. Um, bad check valve and possibly a hole in the line going uh, to the supply uh, causing low pressure. Um, the tester kit didn't quite have all the fittings I was needing to be able to connect uh, kind of T into a fuel line. So I kind of did something unconventional there with that, that tube, that rubber hose that I found pinching that off. Um, probably a little bit dangerous, but uh, anyway, I was able to locate that my fuel pressure regulator was faulty. New one for about uh, 54 bucks. Fuel pressure tester kit for about 160 renting. I will take that back, get my money back. Take the faulty regulator back to the store, get my money back on that thing. Kiss that thing goodbye. Just systematically kind of going through and diagnosing uh, where the bleed off was. Found out that it was a $50 uh, fuel pressure regulator and not a $300 fuel pump. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Uh, thanks for watching it. God bless.